following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Out of the backfield, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. You're looking live at Tostitos Champion. Well, part a little piece of Tostitos Championship Plaza outside Ford Center at the Star in Frisco, Texas, where it is 59 degrees. It feels like 56. The high today is 73. The low tonight is 49. Good old Texas spring weather. Doesn't know what it wants to do. And you're looking at a weird angle. You're looking at the side of Ford Center where they are taking down last year's dark mode graphics and putting up this year's city drop graphics. So yeah. by the end of today, it should look like a brand new building. Yeah, so how you fellas doing? Good, good, good man. Good, we good? Good. Yeah. good. That brother Jess just fell in here. On just walked in. Yeah. How, uh, how was y'all's you join weekends? Us? What up? <laughs> how was your Easter, Kurt? All right, bye. Nice. Yeah? It's, yeah, you know, didn't. And, you know, had family and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, good. Jesse comes in with his phone playing and disrupting the whole podcast. Nate, how you doing? How was your Easter time? Great, great, man. I was, hey, I enjoyed. Where it. were you last week? Uh, I was Where in, all did you go last week? <laughs> I went to Florida twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah, one time I did twenty eight hundred miles because I went to Orlando and all around Orlando we had this Tiger Pride thing. And then I left and came back home, kissed my wife, and then left again. <laughs> you know, and uh, why did? You know, okay. And went back to Tallahassee, Florida, which I did like 1,700 miles. Why didn't you just stay yeah, in why Florida? Didn't you stay there. Oh, no, man. Why, why waste time in just one spot? Have so you, you checked lo- the gas prices? <laughs> yeah, I did check them. That's why I, this is the first time I've traveled. But I was like, man, this ain't bad. I mean, the gas is, you know. I How go. long were you Did that give me a trick cap or something? No. That's the <laughs> hardest cap. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's probably the one I had last. Remember last week I couldn't get that one open? Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, How Dang long were you know. back in Dallas? Uh, I, I spent in Dallas about two days, and then I left. And, and left. <laughs> yeah. So you drove to Florida, drove back to Dallas, which is what, about a 15-hour trip? Yeah, that's 15 hour, you know. Stayed for two days and drove back 15 Yeah, but more. then I came back this time and I stopped late at night, chilled in the van, slept in the back seat, and got got up, man, you know, about a couple hours later. Man, it's good, man. I mean, God makes the, it, the world is so beautiful. Even if you see it the same, you know, you, you know, wow. you go down the same highway, same road with the trees and the animals and the people and you know, and I'm talking to folks. I get out and I walk around. You know, I do the John Madden thing and holler at folks. What's up? How you doing? Great to see you. People recognize you? Uh, Ever? Some to the voice. If yeah. I go like, well, well, they don't know me. But I say, like, what's up? What's up? <laughs> oh, I know you. You the fat guy that hangs out with Jesse Holly. Yeah, that's me. Uh, well, good, Nate. Good to have you back. Got I'm, glad, I'm glad to Got be back. Got the crew back together for the first yeah. time in a while. I was, I was in Florida last week. Where are you? Yeah, what? well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Big big day for you. Got What'd you do? Interview Jimmy Johnson. Nice. Oh. Wow. You doing a documentary? Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, we went down there to. We're doing a documentary on the 1991 season, which Nate, you helped us out with that. And uh, yeah, so Jimmy agreed to an interview, and we rushed down there and got a little time with him. It was nice. On the boat? No, we were at his restaurant. Okay, all right. All right. Is he in Boca? Key Largo. No, Key, Key Largo. Largo. He's down oh, south. Yeah. yeah, that's well, that's where his restaurant is. I'm not exactly sure where. Did you eat at the restaurant? No, we we uh, had bothered them enough, I guess. So we. You missed the opportunity home. for free food? No, there wasn't no free food involved, that's for sure. Mm, but, man. Uh, he was great. Good. Well, Jesse, how was your Easter? It was good. Yeah? Uh, my best friend came up. Hadn't seen him in like over two years nice. due to all the pandemic stuff. So we got a chance to hang out and uh, went to the fight. And uh, I, I, again, I realized that I'm old. I just, <laughs> what made you realize that? I just can't hang <laughs> And run like I used to. It, you know, the fight talking, was over. You I was could over. understand that <laughs> if you were drinking, but you're not even drinking. You but can. when you look at the clock, <laughs> and it's two o'clock, it's two thirty, and then you got to get up and, and try to be a person the next day. Uh-huh. Oh man, tough. I was like, I. Was, and then for the people who do drink, like, yeah, I don't know I how they. I don't know how they drink. 
and then do it again the next day and like make this a like a habitual thing every weekend. I knew I, I, I lived that life. You well, just it, keep it doing it, sweet. Mm. So you don't remember how bad it is. Oh, that's sweet, man. I, 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 you know, went to church on Sunday. That was a struggle. I hung out too late Saturday night after the fight, but I got up and went and served the Lord. Sometimes you feel <laughs> worse if you don't drink because you're tired and you're lethargic. If you, if you. If you do it right, you, you just you know you're still with, a little with, loopy with, the next day. <laughs> what, what throws me off is I'm a I'm very system, uh-huh. right? Very routine. So, like if I start like late, like my 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 nights in later on a consistent basis, or what I'm eating isn't kind of in the same wheelhouse, like that stuff wrecks me mm. it throws me like if i don't have enough water in me if i'm not sleeping enough if i'm not eating like like and i'm not the most i'm not i'm not sitting there saying like i'm the most healthiest either either ever but like if it's fast food for breakfast fast food for lunch you know if it's everything is like always out to eat for multiple days in a row not enough water not working out not getting a proper sleep i'm finished really oh <laughs> my goodness we'll talk about the fight in a little bit you went right yes you and your buddy all right i know there's something that you want to get into Tragic story over the weekend where a young man, Cameron Ray, lost his life on uh, March 18th and then kind of implicated our – a player was under – what was it, under investigation? Well, the group For he was with, it. yeah, they group wanted to there. question him. Mm-hmm. He was the one who kind of stood out on the security camera. Yeah. So he got called in. So – What's the latest development? They've made a couple of arrests over the weekend, right? Yeah, well, it was Calvin Joseph. That's mm. who we're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was with a group um, a month or so ago. Mm-hmm. And um, not him, but the guys he was with got into a fight with another group. And then uh, that didn't last long. But then as they were pulling away, some of the people that he was with in the vehicle uh, shot at the rival group and one of the uh, uh, Raymond, I think was, he was Cameron Ray. Cameron Ray, mm-hmm. he was killed, and so um, yeah, they were able to identify Kelvin Joseph on the videotape, and so they uh, questioned him. And I think two arrests were made yesterday. Is that right? uh, Friday. Friday. Yeah. Quickly, well, they, quickly after they questioned him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. So yeah, it's an interesting, uh, tragic situation, mm-hmm. and. It's going to be interesting, I guess, to see where he lands. Because there are laws in place that just being in the vehicle could land him in mm-hmm. some serious trouble. So mm, it does. And never, it does. And then just outside of that, it's what did the Cowboys do? What did the NFL do? Mm-hmm. do that kind of thing. So, you know, the the tragic thing is, is that lives were lost and ruined mm-hmm. in this moment. Yeah. And and that we'll, we'll start there. Thoughts and prayers go out to the Ray family because mm-hmm. a lot of times in these situations that the vic- when you're dealing with a high profile, yep, that gets lost. That gets lost. Like yep. someone mm-hmm. lost a son, a brother, like a friend. He's gone. This was 20 years old or 18 years old. He was, he was celebrating yeah. a birthday. He was yeah. celebrating. He was here celebrating a birthday from Athens, Texas. He was coming up from I guess up or down or whatever from Athens, Texas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. He's done. Mm-hmm. Over what? A disagreement? You step on my shoes, a push? I don't know what, what it was, yeah. but, you know, a life is now lost and a family's life is turned upside down because of it. Now, when you come to the Kelvin Joseph situation, this is a guy who's kind of come in with a little bit of a character issues from his time in, history. In, in college. Mm-hmm. And... You hate to see this happen because there are so many different ways this thing could have been handled. But for Kelvin Joseph to put himself, and it's not it's, it's not just Kelvin himself. We've seen athletes all across the board for years and years and years and years not fully understand that at the end of the day, when all said and done, you're the one that's going to lose the most when you put yourself in these situations. Um did you know the night of that someone died? Probably not. But the fact of the matter is you were in a car, and I believe the SUV was owned by you. Um, very rarely do you get in a car. Like, when I go and hang out with people, 
I know who I'm hanging out with. Mm -hmm. I know he likes to drink. I know he carries guns. I know he got a hot temp. I, I know who I'm hanging out with. So I, I find it hard to believe that Kelvin got into that car and didn't know folks were strapped. Mm -hmm. Find it hard to believe. Off the, off the gate. I also find it hard to believe that there was a moment in time from when the, st when the fight ended, there had to be either a walk or a run to the truck. And in that moment, there had to be something that said, because they had to turn around. Someone had to know that there was guns being loaded, guns being, you know, rounds being yeah. put in the chamber, cocked, whatever you want to call it, before that situation happened. I, I, I just I need for I need for these guys to understand that these op, like these situations can be avoided. This was an avoidable situation. This situation did not have to happen. And there were multiple points in this thing where, where, and I get it, it ain't the cool thing to do. It ain't the tough thing to do. Hey, hey, fellas, I'm, I'm not getting in this car with y'all. Right. Damn what you think about me. <laughs> Damn what you say about me. Because at the end of the day, I'm the one that's going to lose the most. The incident happened, then you don't say a word. Now, as someone, Nate, you are also someone who's been in this organization for a long time. There's people to call. There's people to call, if not that night, that next morning. Not to come in and say that you're a snitch or you're this or you're that. And, 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 and can, let, me address, let me address the snitching situation. Let me, is my camera's all jacked up. <laughs> let me address this snitching situation thing, okay? Because people get on Twitter... And half of you, half, more than half of you, 95% of you ain't going to bust a grape in a fruit fight, ain't going to kill nothing, ain't going to let nothing die. So don't sit here and get on Twitter and all of a sudden now y'all talking about some, oh, he's snitching, he's snitching, he's snitching. Snitching or ratting, those type of rules only apply to those who are in the street code only applies to those who are in the street. Let me be very <laughs> clear about that. Yeah. If you are not a street dude, if you and only sixty five percent of them, right? <laughs> because when the judge start giving out what we call football numbers, when that judge start talking about twenty five years, twenty years, mm -hmm. thirty years, you sing. Because I ain't going to jail for nobody. But the fact that Kelvin held on to this for an entire month until he became. A person so they, of interest. They identified him, yeah. That to me, that to me is. He, be, he, be, he became the only suspect. He became, mm -hmm. he became the only. See, it went from trying to find these suspects to he became, remember Ray Lewis? You became the only suspect. Nate Newton, you become the only suspect because of who you are and what you're about. And to the snitching point, I told my kids a long time ago, let me tell y'all something. That dude or that girl, the first one to say, hey, man, let's keep this quiet. Let's don't say a word. Keep it to yourself. Don't let the police walk to him first. <laughs> I've seen it. I've been a part of it. It ain't no such thing. 99% of the people that's in the federal pen with any reduced time, if you see a person that has no reduced time, that means he's met, committed a petty crime or he's got uh, 75 years or more, and it can't be reduced. Everybody else? Is it very same? It's, that sounds good on the rap record. Go ahead on, Jess. That yeah, sounds no, it, good it, on the it, rap it, record. It does sound good for the rap record. It sounds good for whatever you want to kind of portray to be. But let's be honest. Like, to, to have this whole – like. Uh, it blows my mind when I see, like, you know, athletes are saying that they're in a gang or they're in this and they're at. How? They are, though. How? Like they you, are. Like, like you, that ain't real. They, they, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, a lot, it ain't of, real. a lot of kids in certain areas, not every area, and then we talking very small, are, are in gangs, are, have been a part of gangs, are 
gangs have kicked them out because they saw that, you know, a lot of times gangs kick you out because they see you have a future and they won't hold you to the creed or the policy. And, and I and I, I get that, but, but like, there ain't no way that you could be a professional athlete and still be gang banging. That don't that don't even that don't, those two don't even yeah, make that yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Who is the, the tight end yeah, you can. the Patriots? Yeah, you can. Is yeah, you can. I'm sorry, man. Jess. I mean, if you're gonna talk real, let's keep it real. I just find it hard. I, I find yeah, it. Yeah. I find it hard for you to tr- be a true gangster when 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 you have a 7 a.m. report time. I okay. find it real hard to be a true gangster when it's, the, when, it's such thing. It's such things as called lieutenants. It's such things as called soldiers. And depending on who you are and where your money, if you financing, you you ain't gonna be held to the same rules. If I'm, if I'm raking out to the brotherhood, I'm, is I'm going to be held to the same standards? No, I'm not. Do I have to tote something? No, I don't. You toting it. You know, if I'm raking you down, what's the deal? It, it, life is so funny because we, we think that the higher you go up as a human being in, the, in, in this world, in this life, we think things don't still stick to us. Yes, it does. That's what took... Uh, a lot of it took a lot of guys a lot of time to realize. Okay, I don't have to be a part of this. I, you know, it, it's it's an oath that I made, and it was the wrong oath. You know, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a few guys that that hold on to that because they think once they get out of football, they're gonna save all their friends. But you can't save that type of person. That type of person has to save themselves. But, but hmm. and at the end of the day, it never works out. And we're, and we're and we're looking at this this Joseph situation where now. Your career is on the brink. Right. Like, your career is on the brink. Because we still don't – just because you weren't arrested today, now now what's going to come down to – because if he if – he, and we don't know when they had the meeting, his lawyers and the police, we don't know what was said. But he wasn't arrested. Yep. Immediately after talking to the police, they then go and make arrests for two other of these gentlemen. And I'm I'm no lawyer. I'm not. But what I'm saying is, it looks like he gave information that led to this arrest. So now, when these guys get arrested, the detectives or whoever are going to say, "Yeah, we have information that we got from." Now it's going to be our story versus his story, right. Right. and then it, then it comes down to who got the better lawyers, right? Who got who got the better lawyers? At the end of the day, you you would think Joseph has the most money, has the most backing because he has the celebrity, that he's probably going to have the better representation when it comes to court. No? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I laugh because you 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 touching on some important parts, but it's it's too much to go over. It is too much really because if if these guys and, and I and I'm not a lawyer. I've been in some bad situations that done turned out to be good and bad for Nate. So I'm giving you part of the experiences that I've been around, and this does not have nothing to do with Kevin Jones because I I was not there. But he can be automatically released if these two guys that have been turned in and say, hey, man, this dude didn't know what I was going to do. He didn't know I was going to that level. You know, that releases Kevin Jones if – you get what I'm saying? And that is just the truth about it. If they say, hey, man, I, w- I was hot, I got mad, yeah, it's make him accessory that he's in my car. I know some people that that went down, and, they, and they per- the people said, man, this guy did not know it. This young lady did not know that this was going down like this, that I was going to take this shot. That can release him. But we don't know, and I don't want to speculate, and I don't want people to run around saying, well, Nate Newton said, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, or something, you know, but – when you when you talking about a life, the, the Ray family, you you're talking about a mother and a father, that is who I would be scared of. That's who I would, that's who I would be scared of in their lawyers, hmm. because this goes so much deeper for for think for Kevin Joseph than he knows. So that's what I would be scared of, uh, and. Uh, I just feel bad, and 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 I'm saying this on uh, right here now. Y'all need to bring me over there and talk to them players. See, because it's no way in the world you gonna know this go down like this. I'm talking about life. I ain't talking about cussing somebody out. Uh, just threw a few hands and walked away. It's no way in the world that you you ain't smart enough to know that you need to get the Joneses out ahead of this. But see, Nate, you know what? You know, 
I've had the luxury of talking to the rookies for the last couple years here. And sad to say, I've talked to Kelvin Joseph in those rookie meetings. And we've seen symposiums upon symposiums. We've seen people being brought in and being brought. I mean, we, we've Josh Brent, who've been a part of some some stuff here, has spoke to guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they've. But as you and I both know, you're still going to have certain guys that are still going to say, even in that meeting, it's going to go in one ear and out the other, and they're still going to go and do what it is they want to do, how they want to do it, when they now. The, the, the hope is that this changes, this is, this is a trajectory changing, a pivot moment for Kelvin Joseph that now he realizes, I really and truly got to get my crap together. Yeah. If, and I don't know what the Cowboys are going to do. Are they going to keep him on the roster? Yeah, that's my question. I mean, do you let him go or do you try to? That's going to be, that's going to be a tough situation. I, I mean, I, I don't know. And, and the Cowboys have been one who have been very, very – Very forgiving and merciful when it comes to certain situations where they've given guys second and third and fourth and fifth chances to kind of rectify situations. I don't know. But we've also seen that the league is probably not going to be – I mean, we've had cases here where where people have not been charged by the law and still had to face stiff punishment from the league on this team and and around the league. vice versa, whether, you know – so, I mean, there, there, there's going to be some repercussions that come down. I, I don't know what it's going to be. Um, teams may want to shy away from this stuff and say, listen, we don't need any more black publicity or that kind of person in the locker room and so on and so forth. But to your point, Nate, absolutely. When I say make those phone calls in these moments, th- this is one of the things about the Jones family and this organization. There isn't much – over the years, and this dates back all the way to the early '90s when yeah. you were here. There ain't much that ain't been ha- that ain't happened here in the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They ain't, this is if there's one place that is damage control ready, <laughs> it's this organization. Unfortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately. I'm tell y'all something. But man. when they get when when they get woken up to a call for a situation this big. And they're surprised by it. What's the least? What's that, the, what's that, 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 that'll set some folks off. The least, the least, the least team, the highest team, all these teams are ready. See, this is just one of the few things that got out. Jesse, you know. And this is why that phone call should have been made That's what I'm night saying. of. Yeah. Because <laughs> if the phone call was made night of, and they could have got in front of this. This doesn't and blow up. And they would have had Joseph over there. This doesn't yeah, blow yeah. up the way it, blo- it has blown yeah. up now to 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 where it's at. The, the, again, there's enough people in this organization that know enough people and enough PDs around here and DAs and judges and all that kind of stuff that this could have got. If you if Joseph whatever he said that day could have been said a month ago, and and they could have been on top of this. And it could and, and, and it, it the system loves those that come forward versus those that are forced to come forward. If they would say, okay, this kid cares, it's on his mind, he's got a heart, he's got a mind. But now society's saying, wow, this dude waited a month. Yeah, and wow. only because they identify. Yeah. And only because yeah, you it, identify. And so, you know, if, 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 you're right, Jess. How can, how can we get a young man, a young lady, to be proactive you know, it's, it happens in our homes. You know, you're like, what? man, why didn't you tell me this here was happening? Why? Well, you know, you, 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 and that is what gang gang related things. For those of y'all that don't know, the gang related things are bigger than. You know, I'm talking to a gang member, bigger than God, bigger than bigger than dad, mom, bigger than brother, sister. So when you gang related and everybody decides that they're gonna close their mouth, it takes what happened for somebody to open their mouth. Now, I know for a fact that when they contacted Joe, hey bro, it's on film. We got enough to deduct. Don't come to us playing. Do not come to us playing. 
So Mr. Joseph couldn't complain. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. They they, yeah. they, they, t- they they told him, don't don't complain. If you complain, then we're gonna play with you and see you gonna lose because there's a life involved. It ain't like you just beat up somebody and you walk away and give them some money. It's a life, and that's why I say I wouldn't be so much worried about my friends as I would be worried about these parents. That civil suit, that and, civil suit coming, and, 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 and the lawyers. That's, that's who I would be worried about. That civil suit on the way. Mm. All right, let's take our first break. When we come back, voluntary workouts start today. And if I'm Mr. Joseph, I'm out there running more than anybody. I, I'm, 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 you'll see my you think face. So? Well, I brought we'll it's makeup it. time. And you can't you can't do enough. Does he show up? That's uh, yeah, I will. Will, will he be? Yeah, I, I will make them send me home. I'll make them send me home, and and and, and my whole life would change. It, it, you have to. Mm. I'm telling. And, and people are like, well, he doing it because yes, I am. That's why. I'm, yes, I, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> we'll talk about that, <laughs> and we'll talk about what yeah. does voluntary mean when we come back on Hanging with the Boys. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek. Get your seat in a seat. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call. And teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone, new and existing customers, our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Proud presenter of this here show, the People Show, hanging with the boys for several years now. And the draft is at the star again. Head to the star in Frisco for the 2022 Cowboys draft presented by Miller Lite. From Thursday, April 28th through Saturday, April the 30th, enjoy live draft coverage and entertainment, a free youth camp on Friday night, and the Draft Day 5K, presented by Baylor Scott & White Health on Saturday morning. For more details, visit dallascowboys.com slash draft. Voluntary workouts started today. What exactly are voluntary workouts? Because they're, they say voluntary but are they really voluntary, and how much pressure is on you as a player to be at voluntary workouts? <laughs> the greater the athlete who comes in shape, <laughs> yeah. the greater the athlete who comes in shape, it don't mean a thing. The Nate News of the world, it's the, it, it, I need for the coach to see me. <laughs> <laughs> that you try? Yeah, that I'm trying. <laughs> no, there, 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 there are tears. Yes, like, it there is. There are tears of guys yes, it is. who this, this matters for the Jesse Hollies of the world, <laughs> it's everything, right? It ain't voluntary. Right, right. It, it's, it's mandatory mm-hmm. that you get there. For those middle tier guys, it's mandatory that you, you you get there. It's hopeful for your Zeke's, yeah. your Dax, your Tanks, 
those players of the world. I mean, I, I've seen I've seen guys who had these workout bonuses and places they're supposed to be and all this kind of stuff. And you got to do 75 percent of the workout bonuses and be here for the offseason workouts. And it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars. They were like, we're out. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm training in Florida. I'm training in California. Y- mm. Y'all can have that. must be nice. Exactly. <laughs> but for those guys, it's it's truly voluntary. Um, but you would like to see as full of participants as possible because this is the part where the team building and bonding starts to come together. Mm -hmm. So you would like to see your Dak Prescott's of the world in the building, working out, showing that true leadership, you know, bonding guys together, getting some extra work in the facility while you, you know, you can be here doing different things like that. So for those guys, it's always a hope. It's hope. It's really, truly voluntary for guys like Dak and those, those caliber of players on your roster. But honestly, for, and that's only really for about maybe six to ten guys, really. Mm. For everyone else, it's I'm either trying to keep a job or working to get a promotion in that job. So I want to make sure I'm here doing what I got to do in the offseason. We, we know that the team coaches and all, they want the guys here. They don't, you know, voluntary or whatever. How do the players feel? If a guy doesn't show up, are they kind of like – well, it's his choice, or is it more like you need to be here? You look, you look I, down on him a little. I've been on both sides of that. Well, I wasn't here. And our guys looked at me strange because we were in a winning mode, or we were building for a winning mode. So guys, you know, and, and see, our strength coach, Coach Warsick, and he was really in control of everything. And uh, a lot of players would follow his lead, you know. You know, like, where you been, man? What you, you know, mm-hmm. they cracking Joe like, man, what you need to do? Like, you been eating a dozen donuts a day, two days, you know. <laughs> they be on you, man. And they, and they be giving you that. And Troy, Ake would just be, Ake would give you that look, man. You'd be like, wow, I should have been here, man. I'm a month late. <laughs> 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 you know, and then, but what, what I started doing was I would go to Florida and work out. So they knew, you know, they, wait, Nate, wait, Nate, you know. Oh, you had the fat farm. I, I call it personal. Work. Everybody does have a personal trainer, but I had the fat farm. But, <laughs> so when you, know. you were there, when other guys didn't show up, did you kind of like – did you give them like – Because it you? was always the guys that missed were guys that so dedicated to the game, wherever they was, they was working out. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know. That they, you yeah. they weren't going to be there. Oh, anyway. man, yeah. They, it, my guys, I'm telling you, Jimmy was – Jimmy was, yeah. Jimmy had you fearful, bro. He had you fearful. You know, so you worked out or you didn't make the team. And all the guys, he believed that if he drafted the right guys with the right attitude who loved the game, which he tried to do most of the time, they were going to be here. You know, you may, if you're a great player, you may get to go back and finish and getting your degree. But Jimmy tell you, oh, home, you had four years. Some of y'all had five to get your degree. You can wait. <laughs> You'll be able to pay for it. You know when you leave here. How are the how are the guys if if somebody's not showing up, do they call the other fellows? Or are they just like nah, let him do his own. Some thing? Co- that's a coach's thing. The relationship you have with your coach. Your coach. I'm talking about the players. Are they calling their other position guys saying where you at? Uh, Why aren't yeah. you here? Yeah, like you'll, you'll hit a guy up, but you know. Like yeah, you, you, you know, know, yeah, you know who will be here. You know, like in your position groups, you like. I was like, <laughs> Roy's not showing up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> I look around the room. I'm like, Des may slide in here one day this week. Maybe he may run a couple routes. He ain't coming. You know, you just knew. You just knew. You knew that. And honestly, it's 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 a lot of. I got to take care of my own. Yeah. It's a lot of I got to take care of cuz cuz at the end of the day when you get when you get to the live football once you are in this league and you you understand the business side of the league and the performance side of the league you kind of stay out of that. And some guys are missing for business purposes. Some guys are saying, "Well, I'm not showing up because I want a contract." Fifteen to twenty percent of yeah. You know, so so you have a lot of guys. So now, do I say now it's bigger? Now I'm like, damn, bro, you ain't showing up. No, no, you can be like, bro, don't, don't, don't. Oh, 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 relax stick, now. Man, get your <laughs> own. Like I'm, I'm working on getting my life changing money over here. <laughs> yeah. You know, hopefully you hope that one day you get this. So it, it's a lot of man. It, it, you understand the business now. The point where you kind of get a little bit. Like hey, 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 my guy, like, let's come, let's try to come on in. Is when you get the training camp. Yeah, mm-hmm. training camp is when it's like you know, all right, Nate, like 
Let's get in Just shape. Just get in shape. Yeah, like, let's get ready, man. You know, hey, hey, put that, put that, che- put that chicken back, bro. Yeah. Put it back. You don't need it. Come on, let's go. Because now that's affecting everybody. Bottom dollar. Because mm-hmm. if I don't have my my starting guard, he ain't ready to go. Well, then, as a running back, if I'm Emmitt Swift, I'm saying, hey, fat boy, I I, I can't get right because you ain't right. <laughs> yeah. And Troy's like, hey, bro, because if you go down with injury because you overweight, da 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 da. Now I gotta put that guy in. Yeah. Let's go. Let's let you know. So. Training camp is when you kind of get those calls, like, you know, but you have to understand when it comes down to that business part of it. Of I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, it used to be so, you know, I laugh, and I know I joke about everything, but, you know, you're getting dogged out because the back then the media were more than allowed and sometimes encouraged to blast you mm. if you didn't show up to these workouts. Mm-hmm. They, they boy, the media, Nate Newton is nowhere to be found. But then you come back in town the day before the first mini camp, right? And they start you in, and you run around right there fat as ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be looking around like, wow, why am I starting? I didn't make the, you know. So I would joke, but it was a serious deal. Like you said, closer you got to training camp, the more in tune you become to what's happening because you don't want to be that guy to let the fellas down. Ooh. All right, two weeks until draft. We'll talk about that when we come back. And Jesse went to see Errol Spence unify the titles. Truth. We'll man, I heard he it. beat the uh, – what got, is boxing, hey, man? He, Ten can hey, fighting. Hey, he got rocked. Who got rocked? Spence did. For how long? In one round. But we'll be back. <laughs> Hanging with the boys. The People Show. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly... Just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. We're teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network's busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. Back to hanging with the boys. Welcome back to the SWBC Mortgage Podcast Studio for the last segment of the show. Drafts coming up in two weeks. What is it like right now for draft prospects? Are they working out? Are they just what are they doing right now? Is they are they through? Let me ask this question first, Jess. Are they through with individual workouts this close to the draft, or are some guys still working out? No, nah, there's still visits going on. I'm not visits, sure. workouts, workouts. Yeah, but when you visit, they work you out. Well, okay, sometimes. okay, okay. Yeah, okay. when you when you go on a visit, it's not just a sit down oh. talk. They'll they'll still get you out there to do some do some stuff. Now you may say I'm not running a forty, but they might get right. you on the field to do some position type type right. stuff. Um, Are they working out getting ready for like rookie mini camps and stuff? Mm-mm. No, because you they, don't know where you're going. This this is this is your. Some guys are still priced you know, staying in shape. Staying in shape, yeah. Because uh, you don't want to show the rookie money camp out of shape. But there's a lot of guys who said, "I'm done with all of this nonsense. Yeah. I'm gonna sit on. I'm gonna sit on the fat part of my butt and chill and, and, and get ready for draft or draft dangerous. days." 
get out of shape. It happens every year. Mm. It happens every year, every single year. And you see guys – it'll happen here. You, you'll see guys coming here from rookie mini camp, and they'll be thrown up on the field, <laughs> and they'll be out of shape, and they'll be having to do extra running after practice. And coaches say, well, what happened? And they'll say, well, for the last – once I got through the combine and, and pro days and I shut it down and – you know, You'd be agent, amazed what two weeks can do. My agent gave me a couple dollars. Hmm. I went to Cabo. I went to, you know, I had Easter weekend. I got my you know what, man? Weekend. You know what? You know what's so funny, man? In the state of Texas, if you ever want to make a place seem bad, thanks to Tony Romo, the word <laughs> Cabo is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, you, you know, you see how that you always true. assert. Yeah, that I was. True. I went and my agent threw me a couple of dollars. I went to Cabo. It, it ain't nothing good happening in Cabo. Cabo's a great place, by the yeah, way. It's yeah. a great place. Well, should, I'm like, we wow. should all visit Cabo. Thanks, you Tony visit. Bobby Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> he don't even get mentioned, Bobby. Yeah. Was Witt there too? Just hit yeah, me by. Yeah. Witt was there. Yeah. yeah, but he didn't ever get. He never no. got any flack for it. Mm. It was always it's Tony. Yeah, Tony's fault. So, yeah. um, the Athletic said Cowboys have gotten worse, and that it was a bad off season, and they need a home run again in the draft. What do you guys think? Who Malik? Someone we lost Malik. Some here the other day, right? Malik I was Turner. Malik Turner, okay, my guy. That's your guy. Yeah. Was my guy. And this is what I want to ask you, Kurt, right quick. Like, yeah, while, while Jesse is. Cedric, while, all our guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric Wilson was my guy and Jesse guy. And Amari. And Amari, that was my guy. <laughs> that was his guy. Was guy. He sold me on your guy. <laughs> who have we lost, Kurt, and who have we gained? Oh. Uh, because our losses has not been covered in my, in my estimation. Yeah. You know, and so that may makes, make us worse. And, and, well, the losses haven't been truly covered. And that's what makes going into the draft. Because you don't want to go into the draft having all of these glaring needs. Like, yeah. we, it's already a 50-50 crapshoot for the guys in the draft. And the more guys that you kind of need mm-hmm. in the draft to hit, the, le- like the less likely that they're going to have a successful year because, yeah, your first-round pick is supposed to hit, right? That's supposed yeah. to be a no-brainer. And, you know, we saw last year with Michael Parsons, that was a no-brainer. It hit. Then you start looking to, you know, two, second three, round pick. Four, maybe five. is it a hit? And 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 second through fourth, fifth really rounds out your roster. Like like that is your that is the meat and potatoes of your roster. That's where you make your money. Right? That's where the money. Like mm-hmm. that's where your your core is is at. And so yes, first round picks are that for that reason. They're supposed to be able to come in. Day one starters, impactful players, people who's going to change the franchise in a way that other guys can't. The rest of those guys, yeah. that's what you need to truly hit. And if you're saying that, man, we need this, 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 and this, it's one thing to buy. all right, we're going to focus on this. We don't this. need but one thing. What? Offensive we don't need line. but one. Th- after the first round, <laughs> Offensive whatever line. you get. <laughs> Two no, through no, six. No, 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 no. Two man. through six. No, no, I'm just saying we need <laughs> – you know what? I'm what, not no, what going there. What do we I'm, need? What do we no, need? No, I'm not going there because. Hey, Chris, you weren't here. You weren't here last week. <laughs> but Nate called yeah. in and he talked for what ten minutes? Yeah, not even that. And it, what? What? How did he get off the phone? We need. To get off, we need office alignment. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't even get no, me no, going no, there. No. Bye. We don't. You know, I, I read something where Dave Hellman said, you know. After he apologized, you know, after he saw, said his sorrows to the family of the Rays family, he said, "We don't, we don't need, we don't, we got three good corners, we got three decent corners, and we can, we can fill in there. Mm-hmm. We, we have the, the places what, what we need. And I know y'all, man, we need some, we need a wide, we need a wide receiver. I'm serious. We need a wide receiver. We need a legit, healthy." Why receiver to come in and compliment until we know what the other who's your who's do. your third guy now? CD Gallup, which doesn't sound like he, he won't be there Gallup is not going to be ready. And so, then so, who you got? Who's after that? So let me ask you this. Well, let me ask James you this question, Washington. Nate. You uh-huh. said you need a uh, you said you need a you need a number one receiver. Because if you need a number one receiver, that means you misevaluated what Amari Cooper. I mean, what 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 what, what CD Lamb was. <laughs> if you're telling me that we need to get another receiver in here, this is what I'm saying, Jesse. As a number one, if, then we if, misevaluated if, who CD Lamb if, is. If CD Lamb come in, 
how many is like nine routes within the route tree? How many? How many? Yeah. I know it's, it's probably more now since it's new new world new age. But about but the nine, route tree is yeah. It's yeah, about yeah. nine routes on the route tree. If he can run seven of them, the new guy. No CD. If he can run seven of those routes to perfection, then I'm then I'm good. We can we can we can go get just almost a guy. But if he can't run with three or four of them on this route tree. Yeah, we better go out and get a we get, go out and get a bulldog hmm. that that can help him speed up his process. Yes, sir. See, because I, I'm I'm all about what's what's good for Dak, and and I don't care what nobody say, and I don't care who run and tell Dak. Dak is not a natural, not yet a natural drop back, read it on the run quarterback, and to, so until he come that you need receivers that can run things to perfection. So if that means go out and get a number one receiver that can help him, help CD competition-wise perfect his game, yes, sir. It, yes, sir. Does it surprise you that the, the business of the NFL is like basically nobody's going to sign any more free agents until after the draft? Right. Where all these teams, like the Cowboys still have a lot of holes to fill, like you said. Why? They don't feel that way, Kurt. They don't feel that way. They're bargain shoppers. They're, they don't, yeah, they don't feel they that just, way. They just assume they'll get that guy after the, they can get him now or later, and why wait? I well, mean, you get them, my, as, why as closer you get to the dra- as closer you get to training camp, guys' price go down because yeah. now guys want to get on teams. And I they'll take that one year deal. I'll take that one year deal. I'll take it for league minimum. I'll take it for you know a smaller base with a lot of incentives and all that kind of stuff because yeah. you you want to kind of keep your market as high as you possibly can earlier in this process. But then as it dwindles down, it gets closer yeah. and closer and closer. Uh, to the season, and and the thing about veterans, the thing about veterans, the difference is then certain players. Once you get to a certain level of years in the league, if you're on that roster week one, no matter what happens after that, you get that money. Yeah. So if you yeah. if you're on your, if you're a four if you're on your fourth year, if you're a four year guy. Once you sign, if you're on that team, active roster, active roster week one, that's why you'll see a lot of guys get cut. And get signed week two, <laughs> because if you're on that actor roster week one, whatever that base salary is for yeah. you that year is guaranteed. But that, the the positive then obviously is is the money saved, but isn't the negative then you're going into the draft with more question marks <clears throat> than you would normally have? You know what I mean? That yes, what yes. Yeah. What do you think the Cowboys need? See, we know that we need they need a offensive lineman. We know they need a why I receive? I don't think they need A because A means one. They yeah. need two. Yeah. Two what? Offensive linemen, at least. They need A offensive linemen. <laughs> they need and they need defensive to tech. sign defensive a free player. agent offensive lineman. Okay. That's two. That's, that's, that's two. So, no, right, so you, need, you, they need you one said A. You're talking about draft A, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so you need A wide receiver. A, I'll repeat, we need a wide receiver because as much as I love C.D. Lamb and the explosive things that he can do, is he going to be that complete route runner that can get you seven of those routes perfect? That So that so that when, when, when our quarterback need that guy, is he that guy? Because I don't care what nobody says. Gallup is not going to be Gallup for, 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 for a minute, not coming off the injury that he's coming off of. Who is the third wide well, receiver? I, I, think, I think that's what the count – there was – they I want James Washington to be that guy, but, but he's <clears> never <throat> been that guy. Like, he's never yeah. been that guy in the system that he was what in. What has stopped him? He was at Pittsburgh, right? right? Pittsburgh used to be. It, it still is wide receiver. You they develop guys. <laughs> what has stopped him from being that guy in Pittsburgh? Talent. You just don't have the talent to be the guy. <clears throat> <It's laughs> he would tell you opportunity, maybe, but. Man, I'm gonna tell you something. We, I know the coach. We know the organization. Now nah, you, you get every. Come on, man. That's one team. That's one team. If they draft you, they are gonna give you every opportunity. Did they draft him? They, they get yeah. You mean yeah. no opportunity in six? He's been there five years, four years, I, five years. I'm just saying what he. <laughs> we don't need. We don't need volume guys, and that's the problem with the Cowboys now. They run volume plays, but their percentages of success is not high. In those volume, they run 76, 76, 68, 73 plays, but 25 of them is, is weak. So, you got to get better. All right, we got to get did better. We got to get off. Well, go ahead, Kurt. Well, did you want to know who we've. Yes, sir. 
Who have we gained and who have we lost? We gained James Washington, Dante Fowler. Well, you, you you heard what Jesse just said. Ryan Nall, who's like a who is that? He's a fullback. He's a fullback guy. Lord, guy. We 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 play that game every year, and then the fullback um, never make it to the season. Free agents we've lost: um, Randy Gregory. Not good. Kiana Neal. Not good. Malik Turner. Not good. Connor Williams. No, it's okay. Cedric Wilson. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> What's wrong? Why you start laughing? I just <laughs> no. The reason. Right. Let me say this I right love, here. Love your description. Let me say no. The reason I say not good. Not good for Connor. Because we did not help this kid be as good as he could be. We did not help this kid. You know, we we let him just get bulldozed by running 800 passing plays. Nah, not good, Connor. Glad you got out of here. Mm. Yeah. All right, we need a uh, two, a <laughs> uh, well, two well, offensive know. linemen, <laughs> and a uh, two wide receivers. So that's Nate's wish list. Say it again. Yeah. Shout out. Uh, two <laughs> offensive linemen, and a uh, two. <laughs> wide receivers. That's not even counting defensive line. No, 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 no. I'm not much with the defensive line until we get the training count. But the offense and, and wide receiver, we need a wide receiver, y'all. Y'all laughing at me. Okay. And then, then who okay. knows what's going to happen with Kelvin? Are you going to keep him? Are you going to cut him? Yeah. yeah. Find the corner. We'll, we'll find the corner. corner. We'll find the corner. We can't cover every base is what I'm saying. But this is why you got to be able to keep some guys around so you don't have to be able to have to go into the draft and free agency needing yeah. a plethora of positions filled. If you had to pick, Kurt, what would you go for? Offensive uh, line. Offensive line. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the shot. Uh, offensive lineman, rounds two through six. I'm oh, still two through five. I don't want a six-round pick. It wastes the time. Oh, so you back down um, to two through two five. five. Yeah, we got four picks we in the fifth. We got four in the fifth. Yeah, so that's what I up. said. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you going for, Jess, at, at this date? I know it can change. Uh, <laughs> and that's uh, A-H. Uh, not U-H. Uh, 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 A. Okay. Offensive lineman. For real? Not in the first round. Not me. Uh, offensive <laughs> lineman, brother. Second round. Nope. How about you going for, Shan? Uh. <laughs> uh, help. <laughs> uh, anybody? Literally. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, only only place I probably wouldn't spend a first round pick would Look be. at this right here. Stay. Maybe linebacker. And pop I, it up. Pop it up. This is what y'all need to go to. Yeah, plug, up, yeah. The, plug the magazine real quick. Yeah, Kurt. Plug, plug, yeah plug. get your Dallas Cowboys Star Magazine star draft mag. guide. Yeah, got the scouting reports, yeah. needs of the position. Bring them down. Go, go to yes. dallascowboyscom star for info. There you go. Chris sent me a tweet. Don't get a book. <laughs> a book. Get a book. Get, get, get a, book. a book, but two copies. <laughs> don't get a book. Get two. <laughs> Hook don't phonics, baby. I need to get there. <laughs> Chris sent me a tweet. Oscar De La Hoya tweeted out, Imagine if Al Hammond lets Errol Spence Jr. fight Virgil Ortiz and I stage it at Dallas Cowboys Stadium or – Vegas at Allegiant Stadium and Errol Spence quote tweeted said imagine if I said no I only have interest in one fight and he's not with you <laughs> <laughs> so Jesse you went to the fight you big fight guy uh, you know I Do you have good seats okay so let me say this I hope I hope that if he does get a fight with, with Golden Boy Production, I got to hook up at Golden Boy oh. Production. I would have like ringside seats, so I would be sitting up there with you know with the big dogs. <laughs> you want ringside Saturday night? No. So here's the thing: like ringside is not really good seats. Like it's when not. you think about like people want people like to sit at ringside because of the festivities and the, and the publicity. And it's all that fun. Kind of stuff. Yeah. It's fun because you see. All, that's a, those aren't great seats. <laughs> it's like front row at a football game. It's not the best vantage point. It's not really, and and so. Being that I know what, the four stadium, rolls up, five rolls up. What's the best in the box? You got to be above the ring. You got to be above the ring. Yeah. So uh, knowing, so knowing that, I knew where to like knowing this stadium, I know where to sit. So mm-hmm. I, you sit at the one hundred level, center, center, uh, field, mm-hmm. center field, mm-hmm. and look right like you, like you literally look into the into this. So that's where I was sitting in section mm-hmm. like 10, 109, 111, or something like that. So it's like fifty yard line, looking at the ring at a level where I'm not having to fight with people like. Looking up at the ring, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, or like I'm right up on you. Really can't see. Can't yeah. see through the ropes. Yeah, yeah. but got people are, are passing farther, by are you. you. Further away, though. Yeah, yeah, you're so a little further away because it's the way the stadium is set up. They have those so fl- floor seats there, but it's, yeah. it's great seats. You sit right there. The ring is here, and then the video boards there if you ever need Correct. that. Which it's hard to not watch that video board. No, it's, <sighs> but it was it was great, and and I got a lesson. I got a lesson in Dallas 
culture mm. uh, at the game. Mm. I did, had no clue. So as Errol Spence is coming out, hometown kid, uh, most time people come out, they have you know music coming out. Right. Well, he had a he had a uh, a rapper bring him out named Big Tuck, mm-hmm. and the song was called Southside Southside the Realist. Right. I didn't know who this guy was. Never heard this song before. But when this music started, I thought the roof was really? going to come <laughs> off this place. Wow. Everybody that was from Dallas, the the DFW area, I mean, they were. How did it excited. go, man? Chris, you got it? How did it go? They play it. I don't think we can don't play that. Right. Yeah, I don't think we can oh. play that. I don't even know. <laughs> what's right what's kind of the words? It just starts out with like saying, like, Southside the Realists. Yeah. Like, then the next the next line of the song is Drug Dealer Killers. Okay, I was like, it's, it's, yeah, okay we can keep that. It's one. gangster rap. So. I tweeted. I was like, I was last night years old when I found out who Big Tuck was, and boy, did my mentions yeah, go blown up fast. <laughs> and I said, full disclosure, I'm not from Texas, yeah. born and raised in New Jersey. Like, but I said, even the, it was a, the lady that was sitting like kind of catty corner in front of me. She was older than me, and she got up and was like, South Side of Rivers. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and everybody let me know like that is a staple. That that whole crew, uh, Big Tuck, and he had a record label. It was like the first kind of, he was like really one of the first Dallas rappers organizations that kind of really put Dallas on the map back in the early late '90s, early 2000s. But boy, did I get a I got a lesson in in, in in culture and music from the Dallas Dallasites over that. Uh, but the fight was amazing. A little under forty thousand people. Uh, Aaron went to work. He went to work and he, I mean, he, outside of the one slip up that he had, mm-hmm. so as he was fighting, his mouthpiece came out. Yeah. And he said he thought he heard the ref say, stop. Let his guard down. Uh, he, let it, he let his guard down. And he broke the cardinal rule that you hear at every single fight protect yourself at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He thought he heard the ref say, stop. He stopped, dropped his guard. Ugas didn't stop. <laughs> Popped him twice. Boop, boop. But that was kind of the death blow for Ugas because I think that pissed, pissed him off. I think yeah. that pissed him off. And then for the next – he was already beating him up at that point. That really pissed him off. And, like, for, like, the next two or three rounds, he just he just beat up on him to where he his eye – they had stopped the fight. Later on, he found out that he broke his orbital bone. Oh, oh man. So, like, I'm assuming that's the eye socket yeah, part. Yeah, he broke yeah. that. His eye was closed, and the ref stopped Somebody the fight. Somebody should have arrested him after that. Yeah, it was it was. I hear these open. dudes, man. The dude that they really wanted him to fight is doing the same thing. Terrence Crawford. Yeah, you should mm-hmm. arrest these guys they beating up on, man. That'd that ain't fair. Dude, that'll be a huge fight. But that's the biggest <clears> part about – not we're not a boxing show, but that's the biggest part about boxing is that they are under these – Managements: Bob Arum, yeah. Oscar De La Hoya, Mayweather Promotions. That's why um, everybody got pissed off and stopped watching boxing. Yeah, right. there, there, and nothing's is, unified. And this is how this is how your boy, the Paul brothers, have come in and been able to steal. Mm-hmm. Mi- I mean, millions of dollars, because while they're not giving you the fight that you want, they're giving entertainment. you the, the, entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. So people been wanting this Errol Spence to a uh, uh, Bud Crawford fight for for years, but because of the management that they're under. It'll never happen. They keep fighting these cans, you know, and they're, they're making money and they're winning and all that kind of stuff. But, like, the boxing world is like, you know what? Since y'all don't want to fight, we'll go watch something else. We'll go yep. watch UFC. That's helped the UFC rise. Yep. We'll go watch other sports. and We'll go watch the Paul brothers knock Nate, Nate Robinson out and stuff like that. I even heard that the Paul brothers offered – they got told no, but then offered again Mike Tyson $30 million Dang. to fight. That tells you the kind of money that they're bringing in. Mm-hmm. If you can pay Mike Tyson $30 million wow. to come in and fight an exhibition. Yeah, the days of the super fighter, gone. Gone. Sad. You know, when you was coming mm. up, guy, you know, you had, you had, you had Haglin yeah. and, and Hearns and all oh. that. They was, mm-hmm. you know. Holmes now, and now yeah. Jerry Cooney and Sugar Ray and, and, mm. and uh, uh, Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran. Mm. No. Man. Now you got to just, you got to watch the superstars beat up on guys like Chumps. Me. Chumps that could whoop anybody, 99% of the general public. So, like, I was having this conversation, and I know we got to go, but, like, when you talk about the level of greatness, you talk about a guy like Floyd Mayweather, right? And you watch a Floyd Mayweather fight and how he takes someone who is a professional. This is what this person has done his entire life and is the best at it. 
and make them look pedestrian. You know how great see. you know how great that you have to be to do that. To take another professional and make him look like something that you, you and know, I would. Do. You know what just make me mad at, at Floyd is this dude is I mean bringing the heat and Floyd just let him hit this glass oh, yeah. off his Show. shoulder. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, how you be so quick to put your head up like right here and then? Oh, you, yep. <laughs> I'm like, and he made it look so simple. I stopped watching. I'm like, you know what? For made me. it look too easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Kurt. Good yes, seeing sir. you, man. Good to have the band back yep. together. Jesse, good yeah. seeing you, man. Like, hey, I, I like what, your what did I say? A um, a, a <laughs> offensive lineman too. I said a, a, a uh, Did I say a? Uh, 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 wide you let, receiver you let two. Your, you let your West uh, West Monroe come out. Look. Yeah, because I wasn't that deep. I wasn't that country. Thanks for bringing it, Nate. A, uh, Chris, good having you back. <laughs> Will, thanks Thank for keeping you. the live streams up. That's funny, we'll man. We'll be back next Monday. That's we'll, funny. We'll bring back next Monday. Draft week. More lawyer talk. No. Like, draft week oh, no. next week. Is oh, it next week? People show. It'll be help the, the Joneses It'll help you all, week. players. I'll hang with the boys. Bye-bye. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?